So in phase one, we've developed a base level of strength, endurance, coordination. In phase two, we're going to take it up a notch and enhance these parameters even more. If you think about skiing, it requires a lot of dynamic, coordinated motions, a lot of balance. You observe these things when someone skis the bumps in the trees or skiing steeps. It also requires a lot of endurance skiing. If you, if you really are aware, most ski injuries occur late in the day when you're tired, when you have those heavy legs. So in phase two, we're going to try to build up your endurance so you don't get tired quite as, quite as quickly as you would had you not been training. We're also going to work on your core, your midsection, which is very important. If you have a strong core, your back is less likely to get hurt. We see a lot of back injuries with skiing. And if you have a strong core, you ski better because you can keep your back quiet and push with your hips where you get your power from. So now, let's move on to phase two. Primary difference between phase one and phase two is we're building on strength. We're building on your endurance. How do you build on strength? Heavier weights, heavier forms of resistance. So this leg press, which we did in phase one, the primary difference is, is we'll go up in weight. So we just grab another weight and we'll increase it. It's going to be different for everyone. The machine will be different depending on where you are. And we cut down the reps. Instead of doing 12 repetitions, we're going to do 8 to 10 repetitions. So same thing. I'm going to have you even come down slower. Instead of coming down on a 3 count, you're going to come down on a 4 count on this exercise. You can even exaggerate. That keeps the tension on the muscle longer. And skiing requires a lot of tension on your muscles, particularly the quad and hamstrings. So we're going to try to train that by moving really slow as we lower this weight. 8 to 10 repetitions. This is much harder than phase 1, which is why you did the phase 1 for 2 to 4 weeks to get ready for this type of training. And for those of you at home who don't have access to a leg press, you can work out using the wall and the ball. But again, you have to increase resistance. We have to increase the tension on your muscles, so you have to get some dumbbells some five or ten pounders, something that makes you work harder and you're coming down on a four count. Just think of when you're skiing and your legs are burning, you've got to build up that adaptation, build up your ability to resist those loads and tensions on your quads. Nice and slow. Shoulders back. And again, just up and down motion. Slow four count descents, approximately eight to ten repetitions. The difference again from phase one is you're using loads, weights, heavier weights. Okay, so now you've either done the leg press or the, the ball squat and or both, and you're immediately going to go into a higher speed exercise. So we went from really slow to something fast, and this is a squat jump. Again, unless you have some knee problems or some back problems that you should probably have cleared from your doctor, these are great exercises to build up a little bit of speed and power. Now, you don't have to jump as high as you can, but the key is just to move a little bit quicker than you would just doing a slow squat. Approximately eight to 10 repetitions. And you're gonna go through that cycle three times, two to three times. Ball squat, squat jump. Ball squat, squat jump. So the second cycle of phase two is the medial lateral left to right step up. Just like you did in phase one. The difference again, as I said, is you're using weights. You're increasing the tension on your quad by holding some form of resistance in your hands. Dumbbells are probably the easiest things to do. This makes it much harder. Okay, so now you're going to go immediately from the, the step up into an exercise that's a little bit more dynamic, just like you would if you were skiing bumps. And we're going to just with control, nice absorption, side to side. You don't have to jump too hard. I'm jumping over a little pole. Just put a piece of tape on the floor, or even if you just get rid of it. It's very gentle. And for those of you who are more athletic, of course, you can get more dynamic with it. You, you don't have to go quite that dynamic if you don't want to. Nice and smooth, nice absorption, 10 repetitions. After that cycle of going from the step up into the jump back and forth, let's do some hop and holds. So basically we're just hopping and holding. Just trying to work on our balance and strength. Think how important this is for sports such as skiing, where you're constantly moving from left to right, 
and you absorb your body weight, and then you come out of the turn, and then you extend it to the next turn. So it's quick, it's quite simple. You're just hopping, hold. Try to balance for approximately five seconds. Hop, hold. If it gets easy, more aggressive. Hop and hold. Try, try approximately 10 repetitions on each leg. And the progression on the hamstring exercise, and this could be a chair if you don't have a ball, is to do one leg at a time. It's very difficult. And again, up and down slowly. Approximately 8 to 10 times each leg. And the other exercise of the hamstring I demonstrated before I talked about was just the four for your balance, reach and hold. And to make it harder, as I said, you can start to try to reach further away from your body. You should continue with that in the face too as well. Okay, let's talk about the progression of endurance in phase two. If you have a ball, great. It goes behind your back. If you don't have a ball, just use the wall. So again, endurance is very important. When those legs get tired at the end of the day, that's when the injuries occur. So the wall squat is just simply holding this position for one minute. If you've been doing your biking like you were supposed to in phase one, or walking, or treadmill, whatever, you should have a base aerobic level. Now we're working on specific endurance for skiing, building up the tension, and starting to fight that lactic acid, that burn in your thighs. Hold this for approximately 30 seconds. And when you can do it for 30 seconds, try to add 15 seconds more in. Remember, you're going to do these sessions a couple times a week. So every time you do a session, see if you can add in a 15 second hold time. Okay, so the second endurance exercise, similar to the first. So let's say you've done the first one, you've done it for a minute. You shake the legs out for a minute or two. Go right back against the wall again, into the wall squat. And we're going to just start shifting left to right. Okay, again, the goal is to try to go 30 seconds to a minute. Wherever you feel like you're starting to become capacitated, that's where you stop. Okay, but shake the legs out and repeat. And every time you do the session, see if you can add on 5, 10, 15 seconds until you can do this for at least a minute. Think about how long you ski a run. You'll find a lot of times you ski for a minute straight without stopping, so you should be able to do that for a minute straight without stopping. 